startup Final Cut 10. I think there's just a corrupt preference file. And again, this is 1.0 of the software. I'm expecting some bugs. Uh, but I've started to get around them pretty quickly. So now that I've trashed my preferences, uh, wasn't that like the, no, oh, maybe that was Ripple's thing. Now I have a whole bunch of stuff that's starting to come back online again, uh, including some preferences I don't like, like uh, organizing the events by date, so I can choose to not group them by date. And uh, there is, wow. Did this 20 times today and I, I got this project back online. Let's see if I can find a project that is offline so I can reconnect some media. Very disappointing. Yeah. All right, well, let's just try this. I know this is a simple project and it's, it's totally silly, but here's some media here, all right, that I'm linking to. I can even uh, reveal that in the finder. All right, let's just get rid of everything. I'm going to delete that media, or at least put it in the trash. Maybe it won't let me. And here, transcoded. Yeah, let's get rid. Well, I do have to relink. So I guess I'll go to final. Oh, I know what I'll do. That's a better idea. Sorry. I'll move this media to a different drive. And, uh, or better yet, no, I know what I'll do. Sorry about this little wrinkle here. I'll just plug in another drive. It's got some other events on it and some other projects. There we go. There's something offline. Okay, I'm going to quit one more time. I really wanted to show you how to, to like Final Cut Pro, not to show you how to quit like five times in, in five minutes. <laughs> C'est la vie. Uh, while that's booting up, I'll mention some other really high-end features I think that are cool. The metadata, I, I think, is awesome. Phil Podgetz does probably a better job of explaining how, how cool that is. Uh, but if you want to use the uh, keyword collections as bins when you're organizing your project, you can create them ahead of time and drag clips right into them, and you just call keyword collection a bin. Call it a bin. Remap your keyboard so that the keyboard shortcut is command B. That's exactly how they work. All right. Um, the, um, the trimming does have a couple of nice features. It also has some real, real deficiencies. Uh, and I'll say right there, that is the wall I hit. I start really loving Final Cut 10 up to the point of trimming, and then I hit a wall, and then there's a lot of stuff I like afterwards, and then I hit a, uh, you know. Uh, but the trimming that I do like is that they have top and tail features, just like uh, Avid. So if I can um, get this sequence back online, uh, we can uh, get moving here. So project library, here we go, project library. Command J is the shortcut see a different drive here. There we go. I'll just go to that one. There we go. Weekend Warriors Final. All right. So right over here I have a title All right, that I created in Motion. And there's a whole template of effects over here. These are all the effects browsers. In fact, the Command 5 shortcut that brings you to your effects tab in Final Cut brings you to a video effects browser. Uh, so there's definitely some nods uh, to, to what came before. Uh, but this particular title in my title browser, oops, in lower thirds that I created myself, I'm so proud, uh, is, come on, scroll, scroll. I'm probably better with the mouse, actually. I mean, with the trackpad. There we go. Well, I don't see it. Uh, but these, you can right click on and open in Motion. All right, so here's the integration with Motion. Now, I think I already have this open, my wonderful little title. And it has a couple of cool effects in it, uh, quite a lot, actually, in Motion. Uh, but in Final Cut, all right, if I select this and go to the Inspector, Command 4 is the shortcut for that. And the Inspector has essentially replaced everything in the viewer except the actual video portion of the viewer, so the effects tab, the, the filters tab, I mean, and the motion tab, that's all here. And here are the, publishes, the published parameters, like, you know, including color. And I could, you know, change the color of my title uh, if I want to. But now I've decided, hey, you know what, I'd really like to make this a gradient. And I call maybe the motion graphic artists on motion and say, hey, you know what, I really want to make this a gradient. Can you help me out here? And so here I'll go to Motion and go to the parameters for this particular title. And in the inspector, I can see 
that there is a uh, parameter. Let's see, where is it? Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. Let's do the text. That's what I'm looking for. My apologies. In text, instead of just a color, I can do a gradient. So I'm going to style and face. I thought it was here. Sorry. Where are you? Fill, oh, sorry. Thank you. Fill width, color or gradient. Now, if I were to, ooh, sorry about that. If I were to choose gradient, then I'd also have a gradient editor. What I can basically do is right click on this fill with pop up menu and choose publish. And I could right click on this gradient chooser and choose publish. And there's all sorts of extra oomph I can get in this, but all I'm going to do is save right now. Go back to Final Cut Pro 10. Now, nothing has updated. As you can see, there's no gradient options here. Uh, but if I can actually find in build in, build out, there is my title. Notice the thumbnail is updated. I drop it on top of uh, the title I already have. And I'll choose re replace. Uh, by the way, there's some new replace options, but we are missing the old one. There's no such thing as a sync point playhead to playhead replace edit anymore, but I can replace that from the start. And now we can see uh, that I now have some published parameters like my gradient and whether I'm going to just use color. Uh, so basically, this updates immediately as soon as I publish it. And you can even use rigs to add, uh, uh, like, you know, control just for, for just about any parameter in motion uh, that you want. All right. Let me please, please, Final Cut, be nice to me. And I really want to show this because this is a very, very powerful, wonderful feature if it works. I'm duplicating the project one more time. Maybe it's AirDrop. Maybe you don't like stuff in AirDrop. Yeah. All right, so it's duplicating that project. Uh, to be extra safe this time, I'm going to quit Final Cut Pro before I bring stuff into it. Uh, I don't need motion anymore. Come on, remote. And I minimize that. All right, so here I am back here. I'm going to quit Final Cut Pro. Oh, I quit the wrong one. Quit. Doesn't matter. We're trying to do this on the Finder now. All right, so I'm now going to go to my projects. This did not save. Maybe I didn't pay attention to where I saved it. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I forgot I'm using that other drive. So portable, projects, sort by date, modified, because I don't even know what we're dealing with now. Weekend Warriors final. And let's take it over there. Oh, no, sorry, wrong one. Uh, find server. And I'll put it in the media drive. And this is what happens when you try to do a class in the same exact time period as uh, preparing here. Let me just actually log in with uh, my read-write privileges set properly. Okay, uh, portable, projects, final. Because you have to see this, because if I didn't tell you what the actual uh, button was called, you would probably never find it. Okay, more than one finder window, apparently. This is exciting radio, isn't it? Okay. Oh, what am I, what am I thinking? I should just do it this way. So, uh, client, and forgot I'm using remote desktop, so. Uh, all right, sorry, hard to think at the same time. So I'm just gonna drag it right into there. Do I wanna send that? Yes, I do. Please feel free to copy. 
All right, so again, you could actually copy all this media onto a SAN or a server. Uh, again, if you want to reference a movie that's on network attached storage, you can import clips when you're doing an import, just like you do off a card, you can bring it off a network attached storage. And Final Cut will put symbolic links inside the event. These are like aliases, only better. Uh, and I'm clearly having some permissions issues or else it's just not showing that it's there. Unbelievable. Did everyone watch that copy? Because I sure saw it copy. Send, duplicate. All right, I think this is just a, a redraw error or something. So let's just go ahead and launch Final Cut and hope for the best. I'll have to show you the button. Uh, if you do get the webinar, by the way, the, uh, uh, the, the, you'll get a couple, uh, a couple people get one free tonight. Uh, I do have a bonus material that shows this all working properly. Uh, so what I'm hoping is to get this project, to get it showing as offline, and then to reconnect it. And we got nothing. Okay, well here's what you would do. You would say, oh there we go. Thank you, Final Cut 10. You screwed up the way I wanted you to this time. All right, so I'm going to go uh, hit Command Zero, which was the way to get into sort of my timeline. You can see all this stuff is offline. I can't see anything. All right, but in the inspector, if I go and select this project, you can see the reference event. It's showing everything is offline. Now, how could anyone not know that modify event references is indeed what I want to choose in order to reconnect all the media? Now, the way this works is actually pretty powerful. Remember, I said this is a database. So if, these, if this project here references media on any recognizable storage, that event or events will show up in this window, and I just choose which one it's supposed to relink to and click OK and it should happen pretty quickly. Uh, some of this, I think, is just some, some redrawing stuff and some, some networking. And there we go. It's, I've just double-clicked on it to go in there, and it's all online again. Uh, yeah. Now, another issue is that this Mac Mini, by the way, just to, 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 to explain a little bit technically what's going on, is not plugged into a monitor. So it, I'm trying to trick it into thinking there's a graphics card in here. Uh, and Final Cut usually will not even open if you're not attached to a monitor. So the Mac Mini is not the greatest uh, editing machine uh, unless you have a monitor attached, and I don't have one attached. So I think a lot of this is happening because I uh, sort of didn't fool it long enough. Uh, but this reconnection, the entire sequence just came back online. If there was anything missing, like my bleary title, all right, then I could go ahead and get that from the motion templates folder on one system and put it on the other system. Uh, right now, a lot of this uh, uh, reconnecting and relinking uh, has to happen by shutting down Final Cut Pro and restarting. But some of this, especially event folders coming online, happens instantaneously as soon as these things are mounted. So keeping your things on a disk image, and by things I mean both 